What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Dan and today I'm going to be going over five extremely difficult questions that only the top 1% of players answer perfectly. I'll be giving you guys the context behind five different competitive scenarios, each with their own multiple choice answers, and it's up to you to pick out the correct answer. Now, these questions are designed to test your overall competitive knowledge severely. They're not easy by any means, so don't be too harsh on yourself if you get some wrong. I don't really have a question for you today. Instead, I want you to guess how many of the five problems you'll answer correctly. Write down your prediction in the comment box, then once the video is done, let us know how many you actually got right. And before we get into it, if you feel like maybe you've hit a plateau and you're having trouble improving, you should give ProGuides.com a try. We have specially designed courses from some of the best pros out there, including Mongrel, Benji, and more coming soon, made to help you guys take your skills to the next level. And with our lineup of pro coaches, you can literally learn from the best out there. Like the video and sub if you're new, then head over to ProGuides.com to get started. All right, on to the questions. Question number one. All right, so for each of these questions, we'll try to fill you in on all the relevant info. So if something isn't mentioned, you can assume it has no impact on the answer. So pay attention to the questions as they might just hint to the right answer. Starting with question number one, let's say you're playing the solo hype night. It's your last match of the event, so you queue in with the intention of getting as many points as possible. You drop off the battle bus and head toward the houses at retail row. As you're gliding in, you spot one enemy landing opposite you on the retail side. As you're looting, the first safe zone is revealed to be all the way on the west side of the island. And speaking of loot, you're hardly finding any. You search four houses and only manage to fill your inventory with a green assault rifle, a great tactical shotgun, a green burst rifle, grenades, and a harpoon. So you've been looting for close to two minutes, yet you have no shields and a loadout on the weaker end. It sucks, but I'm sure we've all been there. You've also lost track of the opponent that landed near you. They could have left early, but they also could still be looting, either near doghouse or at the retail side. With the storm soon approaching and a very long journey ahead of you, what move should you make? A. While trying to avoid fights, push toward the areas you didn't loot in an attempt to find better gear. B. Start rotating toward the safe zone, picking up loot, materials, and fish along the way. C. Continue farming materials in retail and head toward the upgrade bench to boost your weapons before you rotate out. D. Head deeper into retail and try to eliminate the opponent so you can grab their loot for your own. By the way guys, there's no rush, so feel free to take your time. You can rewind or pause the video if you need to as well. It's not cheating, I promise. Okay, so the right move to make here would be B. Start rotating toward the safe zone and pick up loot, materials, and fish along the way. There are quite a few reasons you'd want to pick this choice. First of all, your loadout isn't very powerful. You have zero shields and quite a weak inventory. Considering that's pretty unlucky, your opponent more than likely has a better kit than you, and you don't even know where they're at anymore. So wandering toward the side of retail they landed at could potentially lead to an engagement. And of course, fighting with a significant health and inventory disadvantage means you're probably heading to the lobby soon. So the best option is to rotate early. Hit up remote chests and loot spawns, farm materials, and use that harpoon on every fishing spot you see. You could even hit up the slurp truck west of retail. There's just no reason to potentially throw away your game when you can still recover from a bad start. The same story applies if you were to head toward the upgrade bench. While upgrading your weapons isn't a bad move, you generally don't do it unless you have the time. And since the zone is super far away, you'll need all the time you can get. It'd be better to see if fishing spots give you a blue weapon or two, then later find an upgrade bench to turn those into something better. Okay, for question two, let's do another early game situation. Here's the context. You landed at Lazy Lake, and in your first building, you managed to find a rifle, attack shoddy, some minis, and a trap. As you rotate toward the building that has a garage, you unexpectedly get lasered for most of your health. So you fall back, down into the garage, setting up a few walls behind you for cover. You drink your one remaining mini, but that still leaves you at 55 total health. The player that lasered you found your location and they're hard W keying. They're not placing any of their own structures, they're only pickaxing through your walls. Looking at your materials, you have about 100 left, but there's little time to react. The enemy's at your wall and you've got nowhere to run. How should you deal with this relentless opponent? A. Edit the top right corner of your wall as they try to pickaxe it and go for a jump peek with your shotgun. Reset the wall after shooting, then repeat. B. Edit the wall open and immediately place a ramp. Trap the ceiling, block off their exit with a wall, edit the ramp to expose them, then fire your shotgun at them. C. Hide in one of the corners of the garage, wait for your opponent to walk out, and start firing. D. Turbo build your wall to try and hold it, then go for a right side window edit into a shotgun peek. Reset the wall after shooting, then repeat. All 
Alright guys, considering your health is pretty much in one shot range, the best and safest option here would be B, making a trap play. Traps are one of the best ways to protect yourself against W keyers, especially if you know how to use them. In this case, you edit the wall and block any potential shots by placing a ramp. Then you place a trap on the ceiling and put a wall behind them to block off their exit. Once you edit the ramp, they'll be exposed to the trap. You can follow up with a shotgun hit to pretty much guarantee 200 damage dealt. Had you known your opponent's HP right there, you could have gone for the other plays. The two other editing options involve right side angles, which can allow you to land the first shot. However, it's still possible they return fire or pull out an SMG and barrel through toward you. So not knowing the HP difference, the other plays were far too risky to make. All right, I hope you did well in that last one. Now let's move on to question number three. You're in a solo arena match. It's the mid game, partway through zone number three. In your inventory, you've got an epic assault rifle, a legendary pump, an SMG, minis, and some big shields. You're also maxed out in materials and you've got a couple of traps in your inventory. So with little else to do, you base up in the center of the zone. Suddenly, before you can see it coming, an enemy appears close by, sends a rocket toward your base and starts ramping up. Your base still stands, but they're hot on the move. They pull out some crazy phase sway moves and you can tell they're trying to take high ground. No damage was exchanged and there's still about 75 seconds before the next zone arrives. With them about to take height, how do you play this out? Do you A. Start cranking yourself so that you can control the high ground no matter how hard they try to take it. B. Stay low ground inside your box and wait for them to come to you so you can box fight. C. Expand your box out at the bottom a bit, try to hide, then disengage the fight entirely when you think you have the opportunity. D. Contest height for only a few stories. If they keep committing materials to build battle, you instead turtle up, chop them down, and try to force a box fight. Try to choose the answer that favors you the most. The correct answer is D. Since you're already holding height, there's no point in giving it up immediately. Despite what you might think of the whole box fighting meta, having height over another player still provides a massive advantage in finding openings. And with the incredible kit you have, there's no reason to play passively here. However, there are limits to how high you want to build. Build battling to the sky like in Season 4 is a big no-no during the mid-game. Players are likely to spot a considerable build fight going on. Not only can it get shot down or grenaded easily, but it'll attract way too much attention to your location. Plus, with an RPG in the enemy's loadout, you have to be careful of them blowing your structures up and sending you to the ground. Expanding out your base and finding a way to escape the fight could potentially work. However, there's just no guarantee your opponent will lose track of you. If you get pushed during the mid-game, most times it's best to stand your ground. Sitting inside your box or trying to run away doesn't help you 90% of the time, especially when the enemy is thirsty for elims. Once they've shown that they want to W key you, don't expect to be able to slink away. Question number four, guys, keep it up. You're in a competitive solo match. The late game is approaching and you want to think about your positioning ahead of time. Circle number four just arrived and you need to rotate toward it. You know that circle number five will randomly spawn half inside and half outside the zone. Six and beyond will each appear in a random direction entirely outside of the zone. You have two priorities this endgame, to conserve materials and survive. Considering all other things are equal, how should you position yourself for each of the upcoming zones? A. When you rotate towards circle number four, you look for a spot near the edge. For every safe zone after, you box up pretty much as soon as you're in. B. You position dead center of circle number four, then for every zone after that, you set up on the edge. C. You try to position so that you're always close to the center of every upcoming circle. D. You set up on the edge of circle four, then try to make it to the center of every zone after that. The right move to make here is answer A. When you're rotating into circle four, you want to set up near the edge of the safe zone. Why? Well, that way you might get lucky and have the upcoming half in, half out circle spawn on top of you. Obviously, it's possible to get unlucky and have to rotate the max distance, which makes setting up in the center quite appealing. But rotating to the center will use more materials and you'll still have to end up moving again. Plus, setting up smack dab in between a ton of players puts a target on your back and makes it more likely to get focused. Beyond that, the rest of the circles are entirely random, so when you're rotating and moving zones, there's no real reason to keep going once you're inside. That just uses more materials and you're not really positioning in a way that gives you an advantage with upcoming zones. All right, last question. Here's the setup. You're in a sweaty solo arena match. You've reached the end game and there are 30 players still alive. Circle number six, AKA the first moving zone, has just arrived and it's not in your favor. That means you're gonna have to run the full distance in just a sec once the storm starts moving. 
You're playing the mid-ground position, and looking at your loadout, you've got only one spare flopper and about 450 materials remaining. With 20 seconds left before the storm starts moving, what should you do? A. Look around for nearby enemies so that you can start a box fight and hopefully replenish your loadout with an impact frag. B. Try to work your way up to the high ground as you rotate in, since that'll keep you safer than playing in the middle. C. Stay mid-ground, start rotating toward the next safe zone to get in ASAP, then look for an impact frag to recover materials. D. Start rotating in, but eventually head into the storm, use your flopper, and try to snowball some health back by picking up sneaky elims. The correct answer here is C. Stay mid-ground, rotate toward the zone ASAP, and then look for an impact frag. Let's look back at the question. You've got 450 materials remaining, meaning you can definitely build yourself in without having to find a kill. Once you're in, you'll have a bit more freedom to find the kill you need and carry on with the rest of the match. Perhaps you're wondering why you don't go for a kill immediately. Well, there are 30 players still remaining, meaning you gotta survive only 5 more players to reach the first placement point threshold. Reaching the top 25 in a solo match is a very crucial goal, so there's no reason to play aggressively and throw that away. What about the other options? Well, if you start a box fight before rotating in, you've only got 20 seconds to get the kill and run away from the storm. That could work, but it's exceedingly difficult to pull off and it just isn't worth the risk. While it is possible to take high ground, you'll likely run out of materials as you arrive at zone number 7. Usually in a stacked solo match, you time your high ground take between zones 7 and 9 so that you have the necessary materials to hold height until the game ends. And while tanking the storm can work with floppers, you generally need more than one to survive. While it still could potentially work if you find elims, you're going to need a few just for the siphon to keep you up, making the chance of surviving really slim. All in all, option C is the safest outcome and maximizes your points earned in this scenario. So guys, how did you do? Were you able to ace the test? Or was it harder than you thought? Let me know how it went in the comments. Also, let us know if you have any suggestions or critiques for this series. We want to provide you guys with content that'll help you the most. So let us know in the comments if you'd like to see any changes. Also, don't forget to use code PROGUIDES in the item shop to support our work. We got massive changes coming soon, so stay tuned. But other than that, thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel for similar daily content. Also, if you can, share this video with a friend and compare your results to see who's the more knowledgeable Fortnite player. Once again, my name is Dan. You can find me everywhere at, at Daniel Ammerman, and I'll see you guys soon. Good luck out there.